everyone, this is Casper the Boy Diviner and today I wanted to show you one of the decks I have been using, um, maybe neglecting a bit, the Marigold Turrell. Alright, the box is not as sticky as people make it out to be, the first time was tough, but all you have to do if you do or order this deck, and I'm not sure if the creator has adjusted the boxes, but all you have to do is just tuck here and tuck here. Once you tug at these four places, immediately it becomes just nice. It's so easy to open, as you can see. Alright, I was a Kickstarter backer of this deck, so I've been using it for quite a while. And I do enjoy it to some extent, um, but when I got it, I was not as well versed maybe in the RWS system. Um, okay, so... So, just to give you some background, when you order this deck, um, Emrit Brar, I think that's her name, the creator's name, she mentioned that this deck is based on the RWS system. So, when I look at the images, the meanings of the RWS should come to my mind easily, like a good reminder. Some of these RW based, RWS based decks that I, I think of like, like that would be the Daniloff Tarot, you know, um, that is very closely mirroring to the images in the RWS. Another one is um, the Neon Moon Tarot. But for this deck, it is much more pip-like pip, pip than um, usual, and it's hard to tell sometimes um, exactly what the, the card means. However, I want to talk about also good things about this deck. Of course, I, I do like this deck. It's just that I'm not so familiar with the imagery. It took the creator quite a while also to complete um, her PDF version of the booklet uh, explaining why she drew things um, in a certain way. And I think that really helped me to try to connect the image with the RWS meaning. Otherwise, if you don't have that book, sometimes it's really hard to think about and you might want to interpret the images differently, which I, I find okay. It's just that the intention behind this deck was to mirror the RWS, so I try to stay um, with that kind of um, thought, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, hope, I hope I come across alright. So the card stock of this deck is beautiful. I forgot what the term is. I think it might be linen finish. You can see like tiny little squares in the deck. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's a beautiful card stock. I wish um, I could show you my tabletop. I wish my camera worked like that or I had some kind of stand, but Riffle shuffling is so easy. Like, whoop! I don't know if you can hear that, but it's really easy, it's really nice. This is what cardstock should actually be for, for any deck. This is one of my favorite cardstocks. Alright? Not matte, um, not too glossy. Not glossy at all, basically. It's, it, it is matte, but it still has some shine when you have um, light coming off it. I also etched my card my deck in black. I don't know if you can see that. Focus, focus. Uh, okay, whatever. I think that's the best it can do. I really like how it looks etched in black uh, rather than gold, which was one of the, uh, you know, the add-ons that you can have. I think she's selling the gilded version as well, but uh, I prefer black. All right. Some of the things about the cards, for example, look at this Eight of Wands. Does this make you think of um, the Eight of Wands in the RWS? The Eight of Wands in the RWS, uh, from my memory right now, it's just um, wands flying in the air. It represents speed, it represents messages from the divine. I don't see it here, and it could be my lack of knowledge. These, I believe, are olives. And I'm sure if you read the PDF that she provides, it explains why olives relate to messages or speed. Maybe olives grow at an incredible amount of speed, but when you when I look at this image, I don't see that. I I can't see how. Uh, um. So like how it's drawn, it's, it feels very static. It doesn't give me that that kind of dynamic nature. At the same time, I really like some of the court cards, like this one. All the cup suit, all the court cards in the cup cup suit are just skulls with something in their in their head, and. If you know, if you're good with um, you know herbalism, which I'm not at all, I think this deck will really be a good suit, uh, a good match for you. 
for example, the Queen of Cups, I think this is a lotus. And being Buddhist, I do know lotuses are, are like some sort of enlightenment. And that really helps. At the same time, some of the other cards, even though they don't really mirror the the imagery in the RWS, they really make me understand what's talking about. Like the Eight of Swords is a woman feeling trapped, right? And she, she can get out of it, but not easily. Having a tooth here reminds me of like a toothache. Like, you know, like... It hurts, and yet it's something that can be solved easily by just, you know, going to a doctor or going to a dentist. I, I know this sounds very practical, but I love the imagery of the tooth here. Yeah. You see, um, like the Seven of Cups, beautiful drawing, but I don't see the illusions here. I don't see, the, I only see feathers. So in a, in a way, if you're very used to the traditional RWS and you don't really have time to learn a whole new system and relate this to the artist's intention, I, I don't know how you're going to get through this deck. For example, the Eight of Rings, she's, she uses rings instead of discs or pentacles. I don't see how this is hard work. It's a person crossing their fingers, hoping for luck. Uh, I. And this is the reason why I feel like um, this deck is definitely not a beginner's deck. Even for myself, sometimes using it, instead of reading the imagery, which is beautiful, I look at the title, recall the RWS imagery, and then do the reading like that. And then maybe use the imagery after that to add on an additional layer of meaning. Not sure if that's the intention of how this, is, this can be used, but it's the only way I, I can work with this deck. See? The Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is about defensiveness and like um, defending yourself and getting through that tough last part of a project. And I don't know how Nine Sunflowers relate to that. I Again, I have read through the PDF, but uh, because it's not a physical booklet, it's not something I can pull out and just see anytime I have to go online, I have to look for that PDF file. And that's tough. At the same time, I love almost all, all the um, major arcana in this deck. For example, the lovers here. I love the sun, moon, and and um, star cards. The moon. I think this is a bat, a bat skull. Beautiful. Temperance. Instead of an angel wings, he has bat wings. The high priestess, you see? Gorgeous. The hanged man. That being said, there's one card, one major arcana card. Uh, there are a few that I, I love the imagery again, but I don't see the RWS in it, like the Judgment card. I don't see someone lifting another person up. I see someone pushing them down. In a way, it's interesting because this is a, a deck of skeletons. So to come to life as a, as a skeleton, maybe do you have to go back into the grave instead of coming out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the intention, you see. And then, again, sometimes a, a pip card can make so much sense, like the two of wands here. Alright, I think these are dandelions, and it's about exploring the world, you know, being blown and going wherever the wind takes you. And that is a beautiful rendition of the two of wands, and in this case, to me, it's clear. So, I have to say it's possible that I don't understand the, the herbalism that she uses, the botanicals that she uses. See, the, the Six of Swords, I, I don't know the significance of the, the specific knife used here to relate this to the movement of the Six of Swords. The Sun. See the Lion. So it could be me and the lack of studying. Uh, it could be me, it, but I just want to let everyone know through this review that it, it's not an easy deck to get across. It's not an easy deck to grasp if you're studying the RWS meanings based on the imagery. Like the Nine of Swords is something I also get, alright? The pain in your lower jaw, the anxiety, when you're clenching it, so scared about social anxiety, like I'm in a party, I don't know how to talk to people, this reminds me of that, you see? What I'm actually looking for now, it's the Chariot card. This is the major arcana that I don't really get. So for me, Chariot is always about a bit about victory, it's a bit about coming after a war, it's about control and self-control, uh, self-initiative. I don't see this 
And I feel like the bicycle itself is kind of out of place among the whole whole deck. You know? Yeah, so that's that's why you see the two of rings. So I feel like um despite the PDF guidebook, despite what the artist's intention is, if you are good with the Tarot de Marseille, I feel like this is a good pip deck to use because you can use your your pip knowledge to come together with with this deck more easily than relating it to the to the um RWS like the ten of wands. This look more. Like, this looks more like a celebration to me, like um the completion of a project. As I'm not so good with Tarot de Marseille, but that's what I feel like it might mean. Um the the numor numor numerological numor new okay the number ten kind of um means a completion right and this really looks celebratory it's beautiful it's a beautiful 10 um when i see this i think about the when when you're having a victory and people put a garland over you but i don't see that oppression that 10 of wands has in the in the in the rws i do see this one here so there is a bit of a feeling of oppression but if you do know the if you're working with this as a tarot de marseille deck i think that comes together much better. Just my two cents. Apart from this, the deck is pretty much a good quality good quality deck. If if you can relate and if you do study it with the PDF, I believe it would help you understand the deck better. Uh, the meanings better behind some of the images she's drawn. So I would say Emmett Bra is a really good artist. I will say that she knows how to create a quality product because it is a quality product. As to whether it's a deck I can easily work with, not really. Um, is it a deck that I recommend to beginners? Not really. Apart from that, I think it is a very aesthetic deck. Uh, when I take pictures of this deck from my Instagram account, I usually get pretty good reviews. Like people like this deck. I just wish that um. I had more time to devote to it if I really wanted to study it. Uh, I was intending to use this as my shadow work deck, but I don't think it's it has enough imagery for me to work with. So I'm waiting on the Mary L, the new edition of Mary L to come, so I can actually try using that deck instead. All right. I hope this review has been useful. I hope this really this helps someone out there about whether they want to buy this deck, especially when they are a beginner. All right. You guys have a great rest of the day. You take care. Bye.